What's up, Goth Goober Nation? <laughs> I mean, Gamer Nation. And Goth Hunters! And welcome to Darkened Streams, wherein I review every one of the 327 episodes of Supernatural, or however many YouTube allows, before shutting me down. What did we learn in the last episode? Growing up is hard, especially when your father is on a psychotic crusade to kill all supernatural life that constantly puts his children in danger, and then he blames them for not being adept hunters. Newsflash, John. They're fucking kids. They're useless. You can kick them and they'll turn to jibs. Season 1, episode 19, entitled Provenance, was written by first time, last time writer David Ehrman, who had previously written for a number of crime and soap opera type shows that I only associate with being homesick from school and some kind of foggy fever dream like Pacific Blue. I think there were bikes. Was it a show about cops on bikes? That can't be right. This episode was directed by returning champ Phil Screecha, who last directed episode 14, Nightmare, which I think was a pretty good one. So based on this team up, I'm half optimistic about this episode. I don't know why I feign ignorance in this section like I haven't already seen this episode more than once. It's an okay episode. We don't, we don't gotta do a video about it. Uh, Fuck it, I'll do it anyway. In the cold open, a couple hangs up a creepy Harry Potter painting they just bought at an auction that appears to move when they're not looking at it. They are both murdered by an unseen assailant. See, this is how you do it. You front load the episode with an X-Files actor to lull me into a state of comfort. The spooky man in the painting is in the X-Files episode Colony, where he plays a reverend, and then in the next season, he's in the episode Wetwire. My excitement about this is slightly offset by the presence of the little girl from the Silent Hill movie, which came out that that same year, and she also played a ghosty type character. Unfortunately, uh, they gave her lines in that role. <laughs> We meet up with Sam and Dean in a bar in upstate New York, thankfully already well aware of the murders because of their father's research. The couple in the opening fit a pattern of deaths in the area wherein the victims are found in their homes with their throats slit and their doors locked. This episode is one of many in which Dean desperately tries to get his brother laid. Like you really get the impression that Dean needs this dude to fuck. But Sam is still mopey about Jessica, which like, I don't know Sam, it's been, it's been a while for me even as a viewer of the show and uh, it's been almost a year for you. I'm not saying anything, but like, I'm over it. You know? In the morning, Sam looks around the crime scene but finds that it's already been cleaned out and everything the couple owned was put up for auction, so they show up to the estate sale on the off chance that one of their possessions has some supernatural significance. As an easter egg in this uh, establishing shot here, there's a car with the license plate, The Crip, in reference to Papa Soup's Eric Kripke. While the boys stop to look at this creepy, clearly haunted painting, the daughter of the auction house owner, Sarah, strikes up a conversation with them, but before they get any more information about the painting, her father asks them to leave. Sarah, by the way, you may recognize from... <laughs> you guessed it. The music video for Scars by Papa Roach. Giving Sarah a backstory that is undoubtedly a million times more fucked than Sam and Dean's. Oh, you were raised to be monster hunters? I was in a Papa Roach video. Back at their motel, Dean tells Sam that Sarah is the only way they are going to learn anything about the painting. You want me to use her to get information? Sometimes you gotta take one for the team. Call her. It... Did he... Did he get her number? I thought we saw the full extent of their interaction. He just had that ready to go. As soon as he saw her, he was like, Oh, my brother could f must get number. I actually kind of like this scene because it's super awkward and it plays to Jared's acting strength. I've, I've long felt that Jared often doesn't have much to do, but this is something he's good at. It shows the difference between how the two treat dating, with Dean seeing it as a con or a game, and when Sam has one date with someone, he's like, Oh, look, I haven't done this in a long time. My girlfriend died. Oh, shit, I'm pissing myself. But the thing is, he can open up about that because Sarah lost her mother unexpectedly also almost a year ago. He doesn't, but he coulda. After their date, Sam gets a hold of the painting's provenances, the records of its history as an antique, and all the previous owners were murdered and line up with the notes made in their father's journal, which is all they need to hear to head back to the auction house and burn it. I love when the boys do crimes to get shit done. Big fan of crime. In all its various applications, well, some of them are bad. A lot of them are. But a lot of them are 
fucking sick. They're disarming alarm systems and lock picking. It's almost like they're good at this. Of course, this all seems to happen a little too easily, and there's like two thirds of an episode left. After they burn the painting outside, it reappears in the frame they left back in the auction house. Dean feigns losing his wallet during their break in in an attempt to get Sam and Sarah to go out on another date. A date Sam was in the middle of turning down when. Oh my god! What? The. That painting looks so good. Sam, you really had a vibe at one time, didn't you? Maybe I've been too hard on you. I do like that when they're looking for Dean's wallet, they're like, Is it, is it in the plant? No. Is it in the pot? No. <laughs> They head over to the library to look up any information about the actual family in the painting, the merchants, learning that the father, Isaiah Merchant, murdered his family and then killed himself with a straight razor. This librarian character, by the way, great at what he does. He has one scene, he somehow manages to have more character uh, than, than anyone else in the episode. Oh man, Isaiah, well, he gave them all a shape. <laughs> <laughs> Being a fan of these, I don't know what you call them, like j genre part, anthology part, myth arc series, like X-Files, Supernatural, Fringe, Buffy, Angel, so on, really makes me appreciate character actors and how important they are to making a story rich and fun. Unsurprisingly, he was also in two episodes of the X-Files, Lazarus in season one and One Breath in season two. This would also not be the last time he shows up in Supernatural, but I'll let that one remain a mystery history because I already closed the tab. While the boys are at the library, Sarah's father sells the painting to a woman named Evelyn. Back at the motel, Dean has an uncharacteristic heart-to-heart -heart with Sam, telling him that Jessica, in whatever corner of hell she's roasting, would really want Sam to f*** Sarah. I guess you're right, Dean. I'll do it. I need this. I said I'd do it, Dean. I'm a he calls Sarah, but once he learns that the painting has been sold, he and Dean race over to the new owner's house with Sarah trailing behind, confused as to what all this is about. But they are too late, and Evelyn has already been... Ugh. <laughs> Gross. Sam has a truncated version of the supernatural talk with Sarah to get her on board and up to speed and perhaps driven by the guilt of selling the painting in the first place, she decides to tag along with the rest of their investigation, meaning returning to Evelyn's house. Comparing the printout from the library to the painting now, it's clear that there are some differences, mainly the inclusion of a painting within the painting of the Merchant family mausoleum. Busting into it reveals four urns, meaning Isaiah Merchant's remains are missing. While Dean goes to look up county records to see where this guy's remains are, Sam and Sarah talk about their feelings for each other, and he attempts to give her the whole, you don't want to be around a guy like me, death follows him, I'm a loner, I'm a rebel. But Sarah rightfully dismisses this as him shutting out people because of his pain. She's a pretty well-rounded character for someone who we will never see again, uh, except for the time they bring her back for five minutes in season eight, but that's it. Dean learns that Isaiah was intentionally given a pauper's grave and buried in a shitwood box because the extended merchant family wanted nothing to do with his dead ass. <laughs> So they dig him up, piss on him, and set his bones on fire. Just to play it safe, they drive back to bury the painting, only to find the little girl in it and the straight razor missing. Unsure what is keeping her in this realm, Sam tries to fend her off while they think of something when Sarah remembers the doll displayed in the merchant mausoleum, and that those sorts of dolls propped up near a child's grave were often made using the child's real hair. Something that she would know, I guess, from selling the dolls made to commemorate children's deaths. That's fine. That's Let's just keep this moving. This is a classic setup. Ghost closing in on one of the boys while the other goes to destroy some remains so the ghost will explode right before the gate. Ganked. After all the action, they very quickly summarize that county records or something, I don't know, show that the little girl was adopted and murdered her previous family, then probably murdered the merchants, and that was pinned on Isaiah, whose ghost was trying to warn them by looking at her intensely, I guess. Uh, D Dean very aptly sums up my feelings on that. I don't really care. It's over. We move on. Uh, overall, this is sort of a forgettable episode, and it feels like not a lot happens very quickly, if that makes any sense. The most interesting part of it is that the painting is creepy, but the process of destroying it is like the same format with more steps. Some of these episodes just sort of race by and don't leave a strong impression on me, but are still entertaining for what they are. This is just an episode I, I don't think about all that often, and I think about some of these. In rewatching, there are some fun interactions between the boys, some interesting 
shot composition and editing even. When Dean is racing to go burn the doll, they sort of jump cut his journey there, which does add a sense of tension and excitement. The break-in sequence, also kind of badass. I like the score here, that they weirdly never reuse. I hear bits of the rest of the soundtrack all throughout the series, but I can't remember this song reappearing. Uh, so yeah, not anywhere near my favorite episode, but there's some good here. They made Silent Hill Girl explode. Sam finally got to kiss the saved lady at the end, which hopefully satiates Dean's sick deviant desires. <laughs> all right, that's my boy. All right, I guess I'll, uh, I'll just wait in the car. And last night, while you were out, <laughs> good times. Enough already. What? What? Ever since we got here, you've been trying to pit me out to Sarah. Just back off, all right? I would think that she would want you to be happy. Wouldn't she? Like a Da Vinci Code deal? I don't know. I'm just still waiting for the movie on that one. <laughs> 